Welcome back to Hold My Nuts Podcast, man, where I know you're tired of releasing on your keyboards, your laptops, and your desktops, and you're tired of being manipulated and dominated by female culture, man. You are in the right place, man. Let's get into this video. Warnings about sexual immorality, man. In this video, we're going to look at a key Bible verse to really break down why we should not be practicing sexual immorality when it comes to masturbation, when it comes to porn, when it comes to fornication, when it comes to adultery and any other type of uh, sexual activity that is not honoring to God. This is the reason why you do not want to participate um, because ultimately it defiles you. It separates you from God. And you're not going to be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Um, so what I want you guys to do is, if you can, go to your Bibles and go to Galatians chapter 5. And we're going to actually start at verse 17. And we're going to go from 17 and we're going to go all the way down to 21. 17 to 21, Galatians chapter 5, a warning for sexual immorality. So starting in verse 17, it says, the flesh, for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So, again, if there's a battle going on inside of you where there's a conflict to where you're being convicted, to where you you start to understand, like, you know what? Something's not right. I don't want to continue to live the lifestyle that I've been living. I don't want to continue watching porn. I don't want to continue masturbating. I don't want to continue fornicating with any and every girl that I come in contact. I don't want to keep simping. I don't want to keep running behind women. I don't want to commit adultery. I don't want to participate in these sexual activities that I know is not right. And so there's a conflict going on, right? There's a time in your life where you were comfortable doing these things. You know, you didn't, you didn't get convicted by the Holy Spirit. You, you weren't like feeling bad after you committed these acts. You actually felt quite gratified, you know, and you wanted to continue to indulge in these type of behaviors. Some of you felt more masculine. You felt more manly because you were able to do these things. Um... But when God begins to work on your heart, a war begins to take place. A struggle begins to take place to where it's not as easy to get away with these things because your conscience is speaking to you. So if you have gravitated to semen retention, if um, you, you understand like, oh, you know, my life is not where it needs to be. This is Christ. This is the spirit letting you know that what you're doing is. Is unacceptable and now there's a war going on inside you so the flesh is going to war against the spirit before Christ your spirit was dead so your flesh was ruling but now there's a conflict now there's someone coming in and opposing the type of behaviors that you once had this is what Paul is talking about in Galatians 5 he goes on to say in um, verse 19, he says the acts of the flesh are obvious, meaning it's no secret, meaning there's no uh, ambiguity when it comes to sexual immorality. No matter what the world says, no matter what mainstream media says about, you know, masturbation being helpful and, you know, um, all of these things that we're seeing on the Internet that is just, you know, people living their lives and, you know. All of these things, the Bible says that sexual immorality is it's obvious. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Verse 19, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, 
Selfish ambitions, dissensions, fractions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Here's the warning. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, here's what you have to understand about inheriting the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is here right now. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God arrived with Christ. So if you are practicing these things, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is here. And when you die, your soul will rest in eternal hell fire. These are just the facts. There's a reason there's a struggle going on with you that that opposing force is there to let you know that these things are no longer acceptable and you need to make a complete 180 and turn your life around. You will no longer be able to be comfortable with sin. You will no longer be able to be in oneness with sin because the spirit has showed up and your spirit now is warring against the flesh. says the acts of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality that's any type of sexual behavior that is dishonoring to god exposing yourself seducing women fornication adultery sleeping with women that belong to someone else you got to understand when you commit adultery you are basically disregarding God's high esteem for covenant relationship. You're saying to him, I don't care about your covenant. I don't care that it's holy and sacred to you. I'm going to do this anyway. Right. That's what you're saying. That's what you're doing. But here's the thing. In Ecclesiastes, it says that. People will continue on in sin because there's no there's not a quick recompense for sin. So when there's no quick recompense for sin, people tend to continue in their sin. They they, they continue in their sin because the longer they don't see anything happening to them, the longer they don't see the wages of that sin, they tend to think that the punishment has been you know, forgotten about. They tend to think that, oh, you know, maybe this is OK. Maybe it's not so bad. They tend to get comfortable with it. And then right at the most inconvenient time for them, God brings down the hammer. Impurity, sexual immorality, porn. You're causing yourself to be unpure. You're defiling yourself. You're making your soul dirty. When you commit these type of sins, you are committing a sin against your own body. You are doing a disservice to yourself. Debauchery. That's just wild pottering, wild living, um, just living a reckless life, not wholly and acceptable. Idolatry and witchcraft. It's amazing that idolatry and witchcraft go hand in hand. See, idolatry is you worshiping something other than God. Idolatry is you supplanting the creator for the created thing. See, we worship the paper that comes from the tree. We worship the breast, the buttocks, the pretty face, the thin waist. We worship the creation has opposed to worshiping the creator. This is idolatry. When we remove God and we insert and implant what we desire and what we want, things that won't even satisfy, things that won't even last, things that cannot deliver you from your enemies, things that cannot deliver you from hell's fire, things that cannot deliver you from the wrath of God. Do you understand that on the cross, Jesus Christ absorbed the full wrath of God in a matter of hours? 
the full expression of God's wrath, his anger and his indignation against sin was poured out in a perfect sacrifice on the son. He absorbed the full wrath of God, meaning he took all of your dirty thoughts. He took all of your sexual perversion and anything else you can think of. He took it upon himself. He was labeled the guy who was beating his meat, desecrating keyboards, laptops and desktop. This was placed on Christ. That sin was placed on Christ. Every time you watch porn and you splattered that keyboard, that was placed on Christ. Every time you were uh, manipulated and dominated by women because you were so driven by your sexual desires like Samson, like Solomon, like David, that was placed on Christ. Here's the kicker. Listen to me closely. If you die in your sins, if you die in your sins, that wrath that was poured out on Christ, that wrath is going to be poured out on you. See, Christ absorbed that wrath in a matter of hours. Because he was God in the flesh. He was spotless. He was sinless. He was the lamb unblemished. He could absorb the wrath of God and come back from the dead. But my friend, if you die in your sins, that cup of God's wrath. There's a story that um, a storybook that my children used to, to, to used to read. It was called the poison cup. The poison cup is a story. It's a children's story. But the poison cup was it was a filthy, nasty cup of all of our sin, of all of our just yucky, uh, just crazy life. Poured into this cup, it was filled with poison and the Messiah had to drink this poison. He had to drink the poison in this cup and he knew when he drank this cup of poison that he was going to die. But he drank it anyway, regardless of how disgusting and how profane it was. He still drank the cup. He absorbed every last drop of the poison and died. So that you wouldn't have to drink that cup. But if you so desire to drink that cup, I can assure you this. He is going to pour that cup out on you in full expression. And it took Christ a matter of hours to absorb the wrath of that cup. But it's going to take an eternity in hell for you to absorb that wrath. You'll never be able to absorb the wrath of God because God is eternal. He's an eternal being. So when you commit an offense against God, it's forever. It never goes away. That offense is forever. It can never be satisfied unless there's an eternal sacrifice made that's worthy that could satisfy that wrath. This is why the sacrificial system, you had to keep making atonement for sins year after year after year after year. Because the Bible says in Hebrews that the blood of lambs and goats can never take away the sins of the world. If you're living this lifestyle, man, idolatry and witchcraft, these things go hand in hand. So when you supplant God for whatever idol it is that you want to worship, now you're in witchcraft. You are in witchcraft because now you're giving your homage, adoration, love, respect to a deity that can't provide you anything. You are worshiping the creator. I'm sorry. You are worshiping the creation, not the creator. This is the deception of modern day times. Hatred. Discord. Jealousy, fits of rage. Selfish ambitions. Dissensions, fractions, envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. He says, I warn you, those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So what are you forfeiting when you decide to live like this? You're forfeiting peace. Number one, you're forfeiting communion with the triune God. That's that's number one. Right. You're you don't have access into the kingdom, which is love, joy, peace 
peace, happiness, the abundant life, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So you got to understand something when you have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And it's powered by the altar of God. Is that it'll give you anything you want. Wealth, riches, all of that stuff is a necessity. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you because it's just, they're all connected. You can't serve God. You cannot have wisdom and not be successful. That's what the book of Proverbs is all about. That's why people say, you know, they try to make this, um, you know, being poor, some type of pious act, some type of, you know, um, you know, some type of righteous feat being poor. Like it's like a it's like a, a badge of righteousness. It's not. And pretty much in most cases, and I'm not ta I'm talking I'm talking about in most cases, poverty is a result of sin. Poverty is, is a result of lack of wisdom. I'm not talking about extreme cases where, you know, people are poor because of governmental conditions and they can't get out of these conditions because they have bigger powers controlling them. But I'm, I'm talking about people who do have the power to make decisions and, and are able to make a decision every day whether to get up and go to work. They're able to make a decision every day to whether to take that hundred dollars and buy this or buy that. Right. They, they can make a decision every day to to get this or that and to tie themselves in debt they can make those decisions and when you make the wrong decisions that's because of sin that's because of selfish ambitions that's because of idolatry that's because you don't have self-control so don't ever look at your situation especially if you live over here um you need to really be careful how you look at your situation when it comes to finances because you can be making excuses to be poor because you're lazy and you're thinking that is that means you're righteous. You're not. That is not what that means. When you forfeit. The kingdom of God, you're forfeiting all of these things. Revelation from God, wisdom from God, knowledge from God, direction from God. God speaks, man. I used to believe that he didn't speak. I used to believe that he didn't speak outside the 66 books. I don't believe that anymore. He speaks. He speaks in dreams. He speaks in people. He speaks in situations in your life. He, he speaks. He speaks, man. He speaks. And all you have to do is stop doing all the things that are causing you not to take full advantage of what it means to be in the kingdom of God. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's here, folks. The kingdom of God is here. But if you continue to live a life that's talked about in Galatians 5, verses 17 through 21, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You will not inherit eternal life. Everybody's out here chasing these worthless things. These things that at the end of the day don't matter. But why wouldn't we be chasing eternal life? A life where you would never die. You will never get sick. You will be able to have fellowship and communion with the most high God and your brothers and sisters for all eternity. It's like a vacation that never ends. Why isn't the world seeking after that? Like imagine that. Close your eyes and imagine a perfect world centered around God on this earth because he's going to redeem this earth imagine being on this planet being able to live in peace and harmony the, the ground is no longer cursed and man no longer has to work by the sweat of his brow imagine never dying imagine that who wouldn't want that that's the that's the eternal life in christ that when you die he will raise you back up from the dead and while you're here in this dispensation, God will allow you to take advantage of his preeminent wisdom. You can fulfill your call on this planet by submitting your life and submitting yourself to God. He allows you to participate in this. But if you live like this, if you're beating your meat, if you're watching porn, 
if you're sleeping with somebody's wife or you're sleeping with somebody's husband or you're you're uh, you're worshiping money, you're worshiping status, you're worshiping yourself, you're worshiping other people. You can't go into the kingdom of heaven. You can't make it into the kingdom of heaven. If you put any person on a pedestal above God, you cannot go to heaven. Dude came to follow Christ. He wanted to be a disciple. He said, yo, let me go back and, you know, talk to my family. And Jesus said, man, listen, you ain't even fit to follow me. If you're not willing to forsake your mother and your brother and all that, you ain't willing. You, you ain't even fit to follow me. If you put anyone on a pedestal, and I'm specifically speaking to this channel and to this audience, if there's a woman that you have put on a pedestal, you are not worthy to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You're not. You're not worthy. Because you have, you're worshiping the creation and not the creator. Only Christ can give life. Only Christ can give life. Only Christ can separate the sheep from the goats. Don't ever worship the creation. Don't ever worship the creation. Always worship the creator. Worship the creator. Think about if, if the things if the things that God has created, you are tempted to worship. I'm going to leave you all with this. If the things that God created, you are tempted to worship, then how great must the creator be? How great is the creator? That you are struggling to worship these things that he's made and to put him to the back burner. If God made these things, then it, it presupposes that he is far greater than the things that are created. And what you what you think that you're going to experience with these things. is not going to compare to what you will experience when you immerse yourself in God, those things will pale in comparison, though God will allow you to enjoy them. But everything has to be in the proper order, in the proper context. This is Hold My Nuts Podcast, man. If you got value out of this video, hit the like button and please consider subscribing, man. I really appreciate it. If you if you guys if you if the content's valuable, don't subscribe if the content's not valuable. If the content's not helping you, then by all means, don't subscribe. But if you're getting value, man, like, comment, share, and I'm going to holler at you guys. Oh, let me let me mention this. I got a seven part series coming out. I'm going to release seven videos on female attraction. So all of you guys looking to get married, all of you guys looking to find the one, I'm dropping seven consecutive videos on female attraction. And I feel like after you digest those videos, um, I plan on dropping the first video next week, uh, but I'm going to drop seven consecutive female attraction videos and um, it's going to be a beautiful situation, man. I love y'all. This is Hold My Nuts Podcast, man. I'm going to holler at you guys in the next video. Peace.